which brings me on to our next speaker, Deirdre. And I've spoke to Deirdre and loved her as soon as I met her purely because of what she wants to be able to do again to transform the world, what she's been through and what she does to support children and really how she is inspired not just to lift herself up, but to lift others up and lift others from what she's gone through in the past, but lift others up from really saying that you have the power within to do whatever you want to do. So Deirdre, thank you so much for being with us at Hit Talks and I now give you your eight minutes. Hi, everybody. I'm so happy to be here. And uh, thank you so much, Vicky, for the introduction. So talking about uh, violence against people, I've experienced a lot of it in my life. And I do have a great story of transformation and redemption. I have, um, when I was growing up, so it started at about the age of nine, unfortunately. And my, I was molested as a nine-year-old girl. I didn't know what to do with it. Um, it led me down a path of getting promiscuous and getting into sexuality. And unfortunately at that age, I just had no understanding of it other than I thought that that was love. I thought that being intimate with someone meant that they loved you. And so that's what I was searching for. And it got me into terrible situations. When I was 10, I was raped by a 16 year old. And, um, you know, that you, I almost, you know, you almost manifest it for yourself. Like when you're looking for love and you're looking for that intention, you're, you're putting yourself out into these situations that you should not be in. And it's just very, you know, it's, it was a very painful time for me. But I look back at these things and I see how the transformation happened for me to be able to be in the place that I am today. And I like to say the three C's, this is actually from Brene Brown. It's um, courage, compassion, and connection. And those are three things you need to have to live a wholehearted life. And I believe I'm living a wholehearted life now. And I believe that these experiences in the past helped to give me the resilience I needed to be able to embody these three um, attributes. And so I consider myself to be a very compassionate person. And that's because I know what it feels like to be taken advantage of, to be the weaker link. And that gives me that capacity for compassion. And then I know what courage is because I've had to step up outside of myself and say like, I am so much more than what's happened to me. Those things don't define who I am, you know, let's say slut used to be a word in my head that I used to think that I was, but now I see that label was only put on me because I was a victim of my circumstances. And, you know, as a child, and even sometimes just when as an adult, we get ourselves into situations that we don't understand and we can't protect ourselves from. And then connection, I am so such a big believer in connecting in community because that is what saved me. That is what lifted me up. You know, I suffered from depression for many years after the abuse because it continued on right through my teenage years. I even at the age of 16, I was a victim to human trafficking until I was 18 years old. And to come out of that and to be able to move forward and forgive, forgive myself is a big one. Um, forgive myself for the things that I allowed to happen to me. And then to forgive the people that um, harmed me because it's not about forgiving them to let them off the hook, but it is about forgiving them to let myself let it go. And so you never forget and you know you never want to see these people again, obviously, but you don't want to hold on to it. And when we when we don't forgive, we're holding on to anger, we're holding on to hurt, we're holding on to pain. And we think these angry feelings are somehow hurting the other person but that's not the truth, it's only hurting ourselves. And I was able through getting connected in community um, in a group, a women's group, where we supported each other. And I went in there and I shared my story. I told them underage prostitution. I told them I was addicted to drugs at one point. I know I shared all of these things that I was so ashamed of and so embarrassed about myself of and didn't think I was deserving of love or worthy of love because of them. And they just, held me you know like 
embraced me and told me that I was enough and that um, my story, you know, is meaningful and, you know, wow, what a great person I am to be able to overcome all of these obstacles. And slowly I was able to start to see myself through their eyes and I could start to see that there was a beauty inside of me and that I was smart and I was capable and I was enough. And so learning that through this group that I was in for two years, once I had really healed myself and moved forward, I thought, oh my gosh, I have to share this with other people. Like other people need to know about this, that, that we get to decide who we are, not society, not our abusers, not anybody else. They don't get to say who I am. I get to say who I am. I get to write the story. And, you know, maybe I didn't get to write it when I was younger because I had other people coming in the way but now I'm an adult and I understand and I can take charge, I can be empowered and I can start to write my own story. And so I started a women's healing circle um, in my community. I'm a co-founder of it and uh, I meet with these women and we all lift each other up and we inspire each other. And I also am the founder of Highgate Racing, Canada's largest all-female competitive cycling team where I have a youth development program because one of the other changes for me in my life was getting involved in sport. I got involved in triathlon and then into competitive cycling. And this helped me to start to rebuild that confidence that was missing. Um, from all the years of abuse and, you know, slowly starting to work my way through sport and, you know, raise up my fitness, I started to really become more confident. And so I thought, okay, this is really important for young people. They need to be involved in something and they need to be supported. So I started the youth program to help support young women so that they don't have to turn away from sport because of finances or stress at school or whatever, and that they have a place in a community where there's other in our you know, team, because it's all women, there's other women supporting them and holding them up. And um, that's been a blessing in my life. And I absolutely adore um, my girls and I love giving back to the community in that way. So there is always hope and there is always, um, room for growth for ourselves too. Like, I think this is, you are never a, arriving at a destination. And that's something to remember is that um, happiness, it's, it's like happiness and sadness are kind of always flowing through us. And we have to just learn sometimes to sit in the sadness and just kind of observe it and say, okay, I see you. And I know I'm, you're going to move through me like the river and you're going to pass and then happiness is going to step back in again. And these emotions are kind of flowing in and out. And we just have to embrace sort of all of our emotions and to sit in them. And meditation has helped me immensely. That is something that changed my life. So I would highly recommend uh, meditation to anyone that is struggling right now or not struggling. It's just a, a beautiful practice. And um, that's what it is. We're here on a journey and we are practicing life and how to get better. And I encourage you all to just take the next step if you're struggling just take one more step call someone reach out write something um, and get connected and uh, find your community so hit talks vicky thank you so much for having me on today it's such a pleasure connecting with all of you here and all of the speakers um, it's absolutely an honor thank you you are welcome, my love. You really are welcome. It is so great to have you here and the strength of you being able to share that because I'm sure there are many people out there that have been through certs, maybe similar or experiences and just holding it inside. And that's the thing, when we hold trauma inside, then we're not able to really move on to... to, to, to to, to, to growth, to actually move on to your new journey, to move on to what you're doing to inspire others. And it's, it's, it's magical because your strength will inspire your, uh, it will inspire others. Your strength will support others. And, you know, I love the courage, compassion, and connection because you had the courage to share. And we hear it hit talks as well. The reason we do it like this is to give every single person who wants to have the courage to share, to be able to do that. And, you know, you have the compassion, you know, the love inside of you, because as, as you mentioned, every single one of us deeply is love. And then connection, it's a community. 
your environment, as we mentioned, your environment, your environment is so important. And, you know, everyone watching the replay, everyone here watching live as well, the environment of Hit Talks is actually your family as well, as well as these speakers. So again, we always welcome you to, to have courage, to have compassion and be a part of the community. So thank you so much for sharing that. Mm -hmm.